Welcome. Welcome to uh, My Finance Teacher, where we continue talking about uh, ratio analysis. In this video, we're going to talk about asset management ratios and the link to the video on uh, liquidity ratios, as well as financial leverage ratios, is at the top of your screen right now. By the way, that link is also in the video description. So let's start with the balance sheet, as you see on the left-hand side, and an income statement. And if you're looking at how well the managers are running the company, how well the managers are using the assets of the company to generate business, to run business, to generate sales, to push inventories out, to sell those inventories to the clients, that is when you want to have a look at asset management ratios. There are only a handful of ratios, and I want to start with the inventory turnover ratio. This is one of a couple of ratios that I want to highlight in this category of asset management ratios. The inventory turnover ratio generally will show how good the managers are, how good the sales personnel are in uh, getting the inventory out of the door, in uh, selling the inventory to the clients, that's on one hand. On the other hand, this ratio will show how well the assets are used in terms of the warehouse space. This ratio might hint whether the warehouse space is a little bit too large or too small compared to the actual sales. For example, even if the sales are generally good compared to, let's say, some of the competitors, if the amount of inventory in the huge warehouses is just too large, this ratio wouldn't look very well even if, again, the sales numbers are pretty good. So to calculate the inventory turnover ratio, we take a ratio of cost of goods sold, that's in the income statement, over the inventory, that's in the balance sheet. In our example, cost of goods sold divided by inventory is going to give us uh, the ratio of exactly four. Generally, a higher number here is uh, good. However, if the number is so high that the company often runs out of stock, which uh, hinders the smooth operations of the sales, then uh, that perhaps means that the inventory size should be increased, which will reduce this turnover ratio a little bit down. So the meaning of this number is that uh, in a year, that's because the income statement is, let's say, an annual income statement. So per year, we generally sell uh, four times the size of our uh, average inventory. And um, there is actually another way to look at this same information. If we sell the inventory out four times in a year, then um, how long does it take to sell out that uh, average inventory size? Well, that will take a quarter of the year or three months. That would be shown by this other ratio, days sales in inventory, which is uh, the ratio of 365, uh, the usual number of days in a year, divided by this inventory turnover ratio. So 365 divided by four gives you around 91 days, meaning that if the annual sales exceed the inventory by around four, the average inventory is sold out four times in a year, then it takes around um, 91 days to sell out that uh, average inventory size. Now, the next ratio to look at is uh, receivables turnover, which is the ratio of uh, sales revenue to the accounts receivable. This ratio is uh, especially important when uh, most of the sales are done on account, are done on credit, when the customers, the clients, don't hand in the cash immediately for whatever they buy from the company. Whenever the clients pay um, somewhat later, perhaps one month later, generating those accounts receivable on the balance sheet for that one month, that's when this ratio is uh, slightly more important. When the majority of clients uh, pay on account, pay on credit, uh, that's when this ratio can generally show how many times the average amount of accounts receivable is collected within the annual sales revenue. In our example, uh, the receivables turnover is going to be the sales revenue from the income statement divided by the accounts receivable, giving us 12.5. So if the average amount of accounts receivable is uh, generally collected uh, 12 and a half times per year, again, there is another way to look at this same information by uh, how many days on average does it take to collect uh, these accounts receivable. So that information would be shown by uh, days sales in receivables, uh, which is uh, kind of similar to days sales in inventory, 
day sales and receivables is the ratio of 365 days divided by the receivables turnover. In our case, it takes um, around uh, 29 days to collect the average amount of accounts receivable in the company. And uh, finally, the last two ratios in this category of asset management ratios also show um, relatively similar information, with uh, one of those two ratios being the total asset turnover. This is that second ratio that I uh, really want to highlight. Perhaps uh, these two highlighted ratios are uh, somewhat more important. And the total asset turnover is the ratio of sales revenue to the total assets. Generally, it shows how well do the managers use all of the company's assets to generate those sales. In our example, it's going to be the sales revenue divided by the total assets, giving you a ratio of around 55 cents or 0.55, meaning that every dollar in total assets generates uh, about 55 cents in sales revenue. And another way to look at that same ratio is to look at the capital intensity ratio. That's basically the inverse, one divided by the total asset turnover. Instead of looking at how much each dollar in total assets generates in sales revenue, we'll look at how much each dollar in sales revenue would require in terms of total assets. In our example, the capital intensity ratio is 1 divided by this total asset turnover, which is equal to 1.82, meaning that if you want to generate a dollar in sales revenue, that would require a dollar and 82 cents in total assets. Or if you want to generate a million dollars in sales revenue, with this way of managing the company, that would require more than $1.8 million in uh, total assets. I hope you find this discussion of the asset management ratios useful. Remember, there is a link to the video talking about liquidity and financial leverage ratios. And sometime soon, we'll turn into uh, discussing the profitability and the market value ratios. Perhaps those two categories are uh, more important for uh, financial analysts and investors. And lastly, before you go for today, I heard that giving this video a like can uh, really improve your good luck on the exam. Bye-bye.